and it's time for the G1E quiz. So grab that pencil and paper, number 1 through 10, so it's a short section this time. For the answers to the quiz, you can go to hamwhisper.com and check under the exam answers page under the G1E questions. So with that said, get your pencil and paper ready, and let's get started. Question 1. Which of the following would disqualify a third party from participating in stating a message over an amateur station? A. The third party is a person previously licensed in the amateur service whose license had been revoked. B. The third party is not a U.S. citizen. C. The third party is a licensed amateur. Or D. The third party is speaking in a language other than English, French, or Spanish. Question 2. When may a 10-meter repeater retransmit the 2-meter signal from a station having a technician class control operator? A. Under no circumstances. B. Only if the station on 10 meters is operating under a special temporary authorization allowing such retransmission. C. Only during an FCC declared general state of communications emergency. Or D. Only if the 10 meter control operator holds at least a general class license. Question 3. What kind of amateur station simultaneously retransmits the signals of other stations on another channel? A. Repeater station. B. Beacon Station, C, Telecommand Station, or D, Relay Station. Question 4. Which of the following conditions require an amateur radio station to take specific steps to avoid harmful interference to other users or facilities? A, when operating within one mile of an FCC monitoring station. B, when using a band where the amateur service is secondary. C, when a station is transmitting spread spectrum emissions. Or D, all of these answers are correct. Question 5. What types of messages for a third party in another country may be transmitted by an amateur station? A. Any message as long as the amateur operator is not paid. B. Only messages for other licensed amateurs. C. Only messages relating to amateur radio or remarks of a personal character or messages relating to emergencies or disaster relief. Or D. No messages may be transmitted to foreign countries for third parties. Which of the following applies in the event of interference between a coordinated repeater and an uncoordinated repeater? A. The licensee of the non-coordinated repeater has a primary responsibility to resolve the interference. B. The licensee of the coordinated repeater has primary responsibility to resolve the interference. C. Both repeater licensees share equal responsibility to resolve the interference. Or D. The frequency coordinator bears primary responsibility to resolve the interference. Question 7. Which of the following is third-party traffic prohibited except for messages directly involving emergencies or disaster relief communications? A. Countries in ITU Region 2. B. Countries in ITU Region 1. C. Any country other than the United States unless there is a third-party agreement in effect with that country. Or D. Any country which is not a member of the Internal Amateur Radio Union. Question 8. Which of the following is a requirement for a non-licensed person to communicate with a foreign amateur radio station from a U.S. amateur station at which a licensed control operator is present? A. Information must be exchanged in English. B. The foreign amateur station must be in a country with which the United States has a third-party agreement. C. The control operator must have at least a general class license. Or D. All of these answers are correct. Question 9. What language must you use when identifying your station if you are using a language other than English in making a contact? A. The language being used for the contact. B. Any language if the U.S. has a third-party agreement with that country. C. English. Or D. Any language of a country that is a member of the ITU. Question 10. Which of the following is a permissible third-party communication during routine amateur radio operations? A. Permitting an unlicensed person to speak to a licensed amateur anywhere in the world. B. Sending a business message for another person as long as it is for a non-profit organization. C. Sending a business message for another person as long as the control operator has no pecuniary interest in the message. Or D. Sending a message to a third party through a foreign station as long as that person is a licensed amateur radio operator. And that is it for Lesson 5 and the G1E questions. So for the answers to the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com. You can find the answers under the exam answers page under the G1E questions. And until next time in Lesson 6, this is Andy, K4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.